How do you manage your trades the right way? Welcome back to a new Traders Improved podcast. And thank you for all the comments. Um, it's great to see that I was actually kind of missed during my uh, short vac vacation with Moritz in Miami. And I'm happy to be back, to be honest. Um, I, I really missed the podcast. It's a great format for me as well to just brainstorm uh, th certain topics and also to um, really dig into different topics and questions and ideas and concepts. And I have I've said it many, many times that I really recommend um, writing down things or even just recording things, even if you're not sharing it with, uh, with, with someone. What, what you're doing is that, or what many people will, will um, observe and experience that they don't really have that good of an opinion or knowledge about, about certain topics. We always believe that we, we, have, we know everything, um, but when you're actually forced to articulate your thoughts, your wisdom, your knowledge, often, first of all, it will be a chaos. Um, everything will be all over the place. And second, um, you are you're often missing good points. And just writing down things, you will get new ideas. You will see how things connect. Um, and you will order your thoughts, which is also nice. And um, I'm, although I'm getting a little bit off topic, this is something that I would really recommend doing at least once a day, just taking a few moments, take out a piece of paper or whatever, wherever you are recording it, maybe Evernote, or on your iPad or on a Word document, but just write down what is in your thoughts, even things like uh, writing down what you have to do, not in a to-do list format, but just writing things down that are on your mind can really make a big, big difference. But let's come back um, to the trade management part. Um, and I got asked about how do I manage my trades? What's the best way to manage your trades? How do you cut losses? And first of all, we need to differentiate between passive and active trade management. Those are usually the two big, two the two big uh, areas and ways how you can, <clears throat> or how, yeah, how you can manage your trades. Um, passive management means that actually you don't manage your trades at all. So you enter your trade, you set your stop loss, you set your take profit. And then you wait until the market either hits your stop or your take profit order. That's passive. Obviously, you don't do anything. Active, on the other hand, is, well, <laughs> the name says it. Uh, you actually actively manage your trade, which means that um, you, you trail your stop loss behind the price. Maybe you add to your trade. Maybe you scale out of a trade. Um, maybe you adjust your take profit, whatever this might be. But a any, any form of actively interfering with your trade is uh, is on the other side. And f personally, I used to be a very, very active trade manager. Uh, manager. I used to um, scale in and out of trades, and I used to cut my trades very, very um, quickly. Because it was based on my, my trading journal stats, I recorded in my Edgebank journal uh, certain trade management behaviors uh, and how the market moved around my, my trade, and I, I fi found out that uh, active trade management gives me an edge. But then over the past few two or three years, I noticed a slight shift that passive management was becoming uh, better and better for me. My, my edge was increasing. The less, the fewer I managed my trades. And these days I am a complete passive trade management. Not completely, but I would say 90% of my trades I don't touch them anymore. And this could have two reasons. First of all, it could be that the market has changed uh, and that now the market just behaves a little bit differently around the setups that I trade or the way I'm trading has also evolved. Um, I look at charts a little bit differently. Obviously, um, I have learned as well over the past few years. I have improved and refined my, my way of trading. And then it can also be the case that with the new strategy, the new setups, the adjustments, the passive approach works better because maybe your entry point is slightly different and the market doesn't retrace immediately. Or if the market retraces, uh, it doesn't mean so much anymore. Whereas previously, if the market retraced after my entry, I, I was always uh, getting out after the next candle or the next two candles. But now I just waited out. And this is based on hard numbers on my trading journal. And 
yeah, in the end, this is always the question that nobody wants to hear. Um, I can only tell you so much. I can only give you ideas, what is possible, what you could do, um, inspiration. But in the end, it really comes down to what works for you because in the end, you will trade differently than me. And also, you will have a different um, approach to risk management and how how good you are with holding on to trades. There are traders who, who have wide stops uh, and who don't mind larger drawdowns, whereas other traders like a more active approach. They like to be in and out. They like to see the trade working right away. Uh, and you need to figure that out for yourself. You need to determine what type of trader are you. And then, not only that, then you need to track it, obviously. You need to evaluate it in front of you. Um, and then you can actually make the right decision without relying on someone else. So, yes, I am a trading mentor, but... Uh, what, what I tell my students always, I don't want to create templates of me. This is not a cookie-cutter approach. Um, I'm not here to create clones of myself that trade uh, the exact way. I'm here to provide you with opportunities to open your eyes for how you could manage your trades, give you ideas, point you into different directions, and then encourage testing, evaluating, and seeing what makes sense for you. However, um, what I have seen personally is that micromanagement is a very, very big issue. Micromanagement means a very, very active um, trade management approach. And many traders, especially new traders, have been there. They're, they are always trying to fiddle around with their trades. Every pip that goes against them, they get worried. They do something. Every pip that goes in their favor, they are tempted to close the trade because they fear the market is going around. And just one tip I can give you, take MetaTrader or whatever it is off your phone if this is a problem of yours. Don't babysit your trades. Don't look at your account balance while you're grocery shopping or while you're out or while you're in school. It doesn't help your trading. It won't improve your trading. I argue it's the opposite. It will make you a, a, a worse trader because, well especially if you're just looking at the account balance, you're not gaining any knowledge out of that. You're just purely trading your P&L, and that leads to emotional trading decisions. So if you see that you have issues with that, um, the first step is that you need to really eliminate the possibility for you to engage with your trades all the time. Um, don't look at your charts. Don't look at your account balance all the time. A very, very important tip. Um, yeah, and then it's really, really up to you. Try it out, see what works well, and also be open for, for change and adjustment because, as I said, the market will always change, you will always change, hopefully you will adapt, um, and then you will find out what works well for you. There's unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, maybe, I, I think that's also the, the thing that makes trading so interesting is that one size fits all doesn't exist, and people always say it, it's, uh, it's, it's also almost like a cliché. If it was easy, um, everyone would do it, and then nobody could make money. So that's also, but it's also not complicated. I always say it's simple. It's not easy, but it's not super, super hard. So take that um, as an encouragement to experiment. Track your trades. Very, very important. There's no better advice I could give you than tracking your trades and really analyzing what has happened what you should be doing. You will gain so much about, um, from just a trade review. And with that, thank you for listening. Thank you for all the reviews. If you haven't reviewed, please make sure that you review it on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this. I read every single um, review. And also keep sending in your questions. It's really great to see all the questions, all the engagements. So if you want me to answer your question in the next podcast, uh, just reach out to me. Happy trading.